Good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, March 24th, 2021. I'm pretty sure I got the date right this morning. I checked, I checked. Anyhow, I hope you have your coffee and good morning, Elizabeth. So glad to see you this morning. Mm-hmm. I have Henny with me this morning. Good morning, Leanne. Because I found that this type of cup where it comes in like this actually keeps it warmer, longer. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, that's my story on my cup this morning. Uh, good morning, Greg. Good morning, Susanna. Yes, yeah, so glad to see you. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Joanne. I hope you all have your coffee with you this morning. Oh, good. A smile and some coffee from Lynn. Good morning, good morning. Mm-hmm. Leanne's a two-cupper today. And good morning, Rob. Good morning, Diane. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. And so, one more sip. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Wendy. I hope you all had a chance to watch uh, the year in review video and I know I found it so encouraging to be like, wow, we, we learned a lot of great stuff last year. We went in a lot of great places. So we're just, uh, we're going to pray for a brand new year. And uh, I know it feels weird to be celebrating a year, right? Uh, and, but also, you know, that now our, a, a pandemic has, has given us a new year. So weird. All right. So here we go. So Lord Jesus. As we enter into a new year, a second year of this pandemic, uh, more than anything, Lord, you need to be Lord of our lives. More than anything, Lord, we need to have a heart that's tender to you and to be sensitive to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Help us not to be overcome by fear, but to overcome fear with faith. And also, Lord, as we open up your word this morning, help us to hear what you want us to hear and hold on to it and respond. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are working through this Lenten calendar. And I have totally enjoyed working through the book of Luke, uh, just digging into some of these pieces. So I hope uh, you have been enjoying it as well. And so today, uh, today, actually, we are praying for, if you're tracking, we are praying for prayer ministry. Uh, so our, our prayer ministry leader is Gail Kerr and our uh, Wednesday night is, um, Wednesday night is Greg and Lori Ford. So we'll be praying for them today. And our text is from uh, Luke chapter 21, uh, Luke chapter 20 verses one to 26. And what's interesting about this passage is, um, you know, as I'm reading through it, I thought, okay, what am I going to pick out? And, and there are a few lines. I'm like, oh, that's a good line. That's a good line. But sometimes, and sometimes we do that. Sometimes we pick a line and we go deep into it. Okay, what does this line mean? But in so doing, sometimes we miss the overall story of the passage, right? Uh, so the overall story of the passage is really important, which brings out the one liner that I want to talk about. All right. So we're going to put some glasses on. Here we go. Look at that. All the better to see you with my pretty. Um, so it starts off this uh, chapter in Luke starts off with, uh, the, the teachers of the law, the chief priest questioning questioning where Jesus gets his authority from. And so Jesus asks them a question that they can't answer, okay? Or they choose, they choose not to answer, all right? Because they don't like the answer, all right? Can you hear this? Jesus asks them a question that they know the answer to, but they choose not to answer it because they don't like the answer, because of the repercussions it has back on them. I'm gonna say it one more time, because really, this is the crux of it. Je they ask Jesus, right, a question, from whom, do you give, get, from whom do you get this authority, right? And so Jesus asks them back a question, which he often does, you know, well, does John's authority come from God or from man? 
and uh, and they and they knew they knew what the answer was they knew that John was actually a prophet from God but they they also knew that if they said that then he would say why didn't you obey him like why didn't you do what he said right because that's what it says it says they discussed it among themselves and said if we say from heaven right if John's authority came from heaven he will ask why didn't you believe him but if we say from men all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that John was a prophet so they answered we don't know okay people listen to this it says but if we if we say from heaven he will ask why didn't you believe him I titled the the topic this morning you know when you don't like what you hear and so often we can read scripture and we can go to church and we can have golly conversations and people are pointing out truth to us, but we don't like it. And so we kind of just push it off. We kind of just push it off or we ignore it or we try to find a loophole, which is what we're going to get down to. Instead of actually embracing the truth. Because often, when we have to embrace the truth, we have to give up a way of thinking, or a way of feeling, or a justification um, for, for our actions. We might have to give up our actions. And it's like, well, I don't want to have to give that thing up. Right? For, for the teachers of the law, the chief priests and um, the, the elders, And this isn't a judgment thing because I realize I have it in my own heart. It is so hard sometimes to change the way that we think about some things that God points out to us. Whether it's about a relationship, whether it's about a line of thinking, maybe it's a lie that we're believing. Um, and it's so hard to give that up that we will choose to ignore the truth Right? Because it's, it's easier for us to ignore the truth but rather than to embrace the truth, truth. Because if we embrace the truth, we might have to change. We might have to go to someone and apologize. We might have to start tithing. We might have to start serving. Right? We might have to actually confess something. So it's easier to ignore the truth. <sighs> preaching here it's easier to ignore the truth it's easier to ignore the truth and that's what this passage is about if we can if we can show that he actually doesn't have the authority to say what he's saying we don't have to listen to him we don't have to listen to him right and I remember you know the conversations that in my head like with your parents right and as a teenager you might have said well like what right do you have to tell me you know, to do this, and it's like, because I'm your father, right? And it's like, ah, oh, nuts, right? And you have a choice to actually come under your father's authority or to rebel. <laughs> Who would have thought that disobeying would be rebelling? We don't like to think that about God, do we? We don't like to think that when we disobey what God's truth is saying, that we are actually rebelling in our hearts. Yikes. That's a tough teaching. It's a tough teaching. I know it. I'm sitting here with you, okay? We're sitting here together, soaking this in and feeling like, oh, but God is so good, okay? The spirit of truth, when he brings truth and opens up our hearts to those things in our lives that we are struggling with, he is the God of all comfort. So he actually helps us, you know, if we have to confess something to confess, if we have to start being generous, he helps us be generous, Right? But when we choose to say no, we are actually rebelling in our spirit and we start to put in those little separations between us and God. Okay, And then eventually we could potentially be like the uh, chief priests and the teachers of the law and the Pharisees who just become so blinded right, that we miss out on God's truth. So, okay, I got I to gotta get on in this passage. That wasn't even what I wanted to talk about today, but it kind of is. 
So it goes on, and so Jesus, okay, because they're just like, we don't know. We don't know because they don't want to actually admit that John's teaching came from um, God. And so then Jesus is like, well, then if you're not going to accept John's teaching, then you're certainly not going to accept mine, right? So it goes on to the parable of the tenants of how um, a farmer had, had purchased some land and had rented it out, and, and the renters basically were bad. And they killed everyone he sent to uh, for payment, right? So he sent people to get the payment, and they're like, no, and they killed everyone or beat them or whatever. And uh, so finally he sends his son, and they say um, that let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. And the people are like, certainly, no, this isn't going to happen, right? And Jesus says, the stone the builders rejected will become the capstone, right? The cornerstone of faith. And uh, everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. So this is the key point, okay? This is verse uh, 19. The teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against him. And they were afraid of the people, Right? Not once do we hear of them could but could be what he is saying could what he is saying be true right sometimes I have really difficult conversations, and this is my prayer every time God, if they're saying something that I need to hear, would you help me to hear it? Would you help me to hear it? Would you help me to hear it right I don't want to be so closed off that I'm missing your truth. And, and the teachers of the law and the chief priests, have, have, their hearts have become so hard. Isn't that sad? Right? And that's my prayer for all of us who are listening right now. That even when we hear things that our hearts wouldn't be so hard that we don't miss out on God, that we miss out on God's truth. I don't want that, right? So that's why I want my heart to be tender. I want your hearts to be tender. That even though this is a tough teaching, that we would come before God and say, God, but I want to hear what you're saying because I know ultimately that's the best. Would you woo me into believing that? Would you, would you help me in obedience? So they come up with this plan, right, to get Jesus. Okay, so keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies, really, as if that was going to work with Jesus, uh, who pretended to be honest. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so they might hand him over to the power and authority of the government because what happened is that the chief priests, teachers of the law, had no authority to actually kill anyone. You needed civic authority, and they only had religious authority. So they actually teamed up with the Herodians, which was like, why? The Herodians? Really? Because the Herodians were uh, Gentile sympathizers to the Roman government, right? So they were Jewish people who sympathized with the Gentiles, with the Romans, right? Because they really wanted the civic power. Things people do for themselves. Anyways, I know I'm in the boat. I'm in the boat. Um, there's a lot of things I do for myself rather than listening to the voice of God. So I'm feeling convicted too. And so they say, you know, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? And so, because they want to catch him. Because if he says yes, then he's affirming Caesar's rule and he totally loses all favor and popularity with the people. Yay! People don't like him anymore. That's good. Nobody listens to him. Yep, yep. Right? Or if he says no, then he's basically rising up against um he's rising up against Caesar and they can arrest him. Yay! No more Jesus. See what the problem is? They're like, let's put him between a rock and a hard place. Because I think they're feeling the pressure of what he did to them, right? Because he put them between a rock and a hard place. Tell me, right? Under whose authority did John preach? So they're they're getting back at Jesus. He says, "Give me a denarius, uh, which was um, a, a coin that they used uh, to pay a tax that they didn't want to pay." Anyways, um, so he saw through their duplicity, right? Because it's Jesus, and he can see through our duplicity. All right, he knows when we're turning aside, right? He knows. He knows, Jen. I know. I'm preaching to myself this morning. Okay. And they say Caesar's name is on it. And it says, he said to them, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God's what is God's. And they were unable to trap him in what he had 
said there in public and astonished by his answer, he became silent. Because basically what he said, by saying give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is God, he acknowledged two things. Uh, one, he, he was acknowledging, because everybody knew that everything belonged to God. So he confirmed with the Jewish people, everything belongs to God. But he also affirmed, he also affirmed earthly government by saying, but give to Caesars what is Caesars. Because governments, whether they are corrupt or not corrupt, are ultimately placed on the earth to look after people, to take care of people. Um, and so what Jesus is saying is, ultim and ultimately everything belongs to God, and it's God who sets up government to look after people on earth, right? And that's why he says so often in the New Testament that we're to pray for our government leaders. Um, and, and so, right, he totally messed up the plan of the, of the chief priests and the teachers of the law. He totally messed it up by actually, actually, <laughs> I love it, by putting something else before them that they had to think, like, oh, because they didn't like the Roman government, but now they had to figure out how to actually come underneath the Roman government and be the people God has called them to be, right? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, right? I know, there's Jesus, there's Jesus teaching truth. And so are we willing, are we willing to receive the truth today? Because I know even for us today, we find it hard to support our government and so many things that they're asking us to do, right? Because ultimately their desire is Right, God set them up to look after us, and so how do we help them look after us? It's a tough teaching because we don't want to hear it, right? We just want to rail against the government rather than saying, God, how do I respond to the government in a godly way? How do I support them? How do I encourage them, right? I know. And so here we go, beginning to end, it's all about how do we deal with stuff that we don't want to hear. We ch often will challenge the person's authority and look for a way out rather than embracing it. And that's what they're doing in this passage. They're challenging, who, who gave you permission to talk like this? And then they look for a way out, you know, is there a loophole? Rather than saying, God, what's the truth that you want me to hear? Would you help me to hold on to it? And would you help me to walk it out? I know, it's tough teaching, but that's my prayer for us this morning. So let's pray it, oh Lord God. Would you help us to hold on to your teaching today? And when we struggle with receiving it into our spirit, instead of uh, looking for <laughs> a loophole out, God, would you reveal your truth to us and would you help us to walk it out? And Lord, if we have to confess, if we have to give, if we have to serve, would you give us the courage and strength to do that? And we ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. I hope you have a great, great day. Make sure you get outside today. Okay? Bye.